Hey guys, and welcome to episode 10, got that right this time, of What We Watch in the Shadows podcast. Uh, we've reached double digits. I've been trying to keep up with this. I'm a few days, almost a week late from when I usually typically post. So I try to get up at the beginning of the month for my previous month's worth of movie watching, but better late than never. A um, little bit lower-ish month compared to my previous months in terms of movie watching. Still, I'm sure, a higher amount than the average human being when it comes to uh how many movies they're watching in a given time frame. So, uh, but I did my count on Letterbox, which if you guys haven't heard me mention Letterbox before, it is a like social media, Facebook type place source for posting your reviews, star ratings, that sort of thing, keeping track of your movie watching, that sort of thing. So if you guys are interested in it, uh, my uh, profile link is down below. You can uh, follow, we'll do follow for follows there and that sort of thing. So definitely consider if you're like into movies and keeping up on that type of stuff. So. But uh, yeah, using that app, I was able to check out how many I watched, and I was at 28 for the month of August. Um, so like I said, compared to the previous month, which I was at 35, I think 40 movies uh, on the lower end this month, but still a good, decent amount of movies. Um, wasn't really anything in particular that I was going for, just kind of all over the place, random. Um, try to watch more like newerly, newer, recently purchased uh, titles, um, just to kind of catch up on some of those while throwing in some, you know, obviously movies I've never seen before. Um, have five titles here. Uh, one that's just more of an honorable mention, and then the other four ones I'll talk a little bit more in depth. So uh, the first one, honorable mention one, is one I've already watched before, so that's why I, I did this one, just because um, I try to do ones I'd never seen before. So this one I've seen before, but that's why it's on the honorable mention side. But uh, recently picked up from Scream Factory, they dropped a 4K steelbook of the Evil Dead remake, and I just with Alien, uh, you know, Romulus coming out, uh, the director that did Evil Dead, uh, I had to pick up and watch this movie again, and it just it doesn't disappoint. Uh, it it's one of those movies where it is on par, if not almost cl close. It could surpass the original. I feel like in terms of quality, uh, film and everything. So if you have not seen the remake, definitely, like I said, worth a watch um, for if you're in a horror and that sort of things. So it's it's on par with the. Uh, type of movie compared to the original and that sort of thing so so now the next four um article more in depth on no particular order so and again these are all first time watches so don't don't destroy me <laughs> um never seen everything so this is the point of you know finding movies in the thrift is to find titles i've never seen before and it gives me the motivation to watch it and that sort of thing so the first one up was uh, Ben Affleck's first directed movie, which was Gone, Baby Gone, starring Casey Affleck, his brother, coincidentally. Um, but man, like I've heard people talk about this movie before, so and I, I know I'm dropping the ball not seeing it, but um, really, I love the crime noir type movies, and uh, Ben Affleck is really good at that. I mean, The Town is probably one of my top five in a ten favorite movies. Um Gone Baby Gone is basically Casey Affleck is his private investigator. Uh, him and his girlfriend are uh, like kind of like their business. And this, and they live in this small town in Boston. They uh, have this girl that goes missing, this little girl. And they get hired by the uh, aunt and uncle to help find this little girl. And there's just, there's hidden, you know, um, involvement of the police. With all, I'm trying not to spoil too much, obviously. But there's a lot of sub- you know layers to what is going on with this girl reason she's gone missing and everything like that so um uh, yeah just really great performances from the whole cast i mean you got you know morgan freeman you got ed harris in it um the girl from the office i'm i'm dropping the ball on her name right now amy ryan she's in the office for a bunch of episodes she got an oscar not for this movie rightfully so she did a great job so again if you're in the crime noir type movies gone baby gone if you haven't seen it already definitely worth a watch if you're into like the town it's right on par i feel like with that kind of style and you know drama and that sort of thing uh town slightly a little bit better though so uh moving on to some more some more animation <laughs> type movies or movie uh it is wes anderson's the isle of dogs i was so excited to see this movie in theaters and never got around to it unfortunately because i think it was just right around before the pandemic when it came out so um 2018 i think 2019 that this came out um but yeah loved wes anderson's fantastic mr fox like he gets these casts of actors that you're just like oh my god it's like star-studded and same thing with this one i mean he's got 
I can't even go through the whole list, so I'll just kind of name off a few. You know, uh, Jeff Goldblum, Scarlett Johansson, Tilda Swinton, Lee Schreiber, Bill Murray, uh, Ken Watanabe. I'm just kind of smart. Brian Cranston's lead, Edward Norton. I think I said Leif Schreiber. I'm not sure if I did or not. So um, Francis McDormand and just a whole slew of other actors, Harvey Keitel, you know. Um, but basically, Isle of Dogs is like this. Vi- it's kind of funny because it happened. Like this movie, like I said, it came out right before the pandemic. And it's kind of a similar uh, situation. Yeah, 2018. Um, this like virus that it's affecting dogs and stuff and how their behavior is. So they basically quarantine all dogs in the world on this island. Um, and then it kind of just these dogs are like, living on this island um, trying to survive. And it's this boy um, that is trying to find his dog and he lands up on the island. And it's like the dog's trying to communicate with each other, but then communicate with this boy because the boy can't understand them. So it's got that Wes Anderson kind of dryish sense of humor that you can't help but laugh at. Um, the animation, love stop it, motion animation. And it's, it's just fantastic. It's beautiful looking. Um, the score, the music in it and everything. It's just perfect. I, I love Wes Anderson's animated type movies. So definitely worth a watch. If you like Fantastic Mr. Fox, if you like stop motion animation type movies, it's worth seeing. Um, go on something uh, even more lighthearted. Uh, this one, I was something also I was looking forward to seeing in theaters, just never got around to it, but found it on a steel book at Walmart. So I snagged it and it did not disappoint. That was Cocaine Bear. Um, I actually gave this. I, I ridiculously. I know. I'm sure. I'm, I'm out of. I'm out of my wheelhouse when it comes to rating. But I gave it five stars because, first of all, I gave it for Ray Liotta. It's one of his very last movies. You know, R.I.P. to him and everything like that. But it's just ridiculous. The idea, the premise of the movie to begin with, and the, you know, the drama, the action, the the humor aspect to it. It's the violence and all that it's like the one of those funny horror type movies you know it's not a horror movie i don't think it's labeled as one i could be wrong but it is hilarious i was i was losing it the whole movie it's it's so good so definitely worth a good laugh to watch cocaine bear so if you've not seen it check it out and then last but not least we're going a little bit more serious side um so sorry to kind of bring it down a little bit here at the end but um movie that i had actually had recommendations to me from other people and then i found it you know on blu-ray so i picked it up and that is nocturnal animals with amy adams and jake gyllenhaal and man like like with what's like you know what i have going on my personal life now with you know a daughter in the world and everything like that this movie hits like so much more now or aspects of stuff like this hit so much harder now um basically uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's character is a writer. Uh, him and Amy Adams were married, and now they're divorced. Um, and he sends her a copy of his new book at the beginning, stating, like, you know, hey, you were an inspiration to this book. Hopefully we can get together at some point, you know, just to catch up and everything like that. And she's reading the story, this book that he's reading, and it's like Amy Adams and Jake Gyllenhaal are the, like, when she's reading the book, it's, she's Im- the imagery is portraying on the screen you're watching and Amy Adams and Jake Joan Hall are playing the characters in the book, basically um, in the story that she's, you know, reading through and very dark, very uh, sad, depressing type movie, but the performances, Amy Adams and Jake, Gyllenhaal, I mean, no surprise there um, killing it. I believe uh, Michael Shannon's in it. He delivers a really great performance in it as well. So, um again very dark twisted type movie so if you're into that sort of like you know not twisted stuff but you know if you're into sort of really deep diving serious subjects and stories um with great performances nocturnal Animals is good enough for you there i don't want to reveal too much about what the book that he's that she amy adams is reading i was like i said i don't want to spoil stuff on this type of video so um but it's again it's very deep dark like situation circumstance that happens in the book she's reading it and then in the real world she's trying to compress it and think to like what how is she the influence to this book and so really really well done like i said type movie so definitely worth a watch there and um yeah that's pretty much for the top movies i had like i like i said i mean i i watched 28 movies and there are plenty of others that are three four stars some of them are rewatches some of them are just you know everybody's seen you know this movie like i just watched silver lines playbook everybody i'm sure has seen or heard of that movie so i kind of 
don't pick something like that but again uh try to pick out movies that are more obscure so hope you guys enjoyed some of these uh recommendations and let me know in the comments if you decide to go check them out or if you have seen these movies and what you think of them and i'll see you guys in next month's review video um and i'll see you also for any new future videos um if you guys are interested in subscribing to the channel for any future content greatly appreciate it and i'll see you guys next time as always take it easy see ya <laughs>